Hey YouTubians, Gary here with VW Jawbreaker. Today is the day I've been waiting for for a little while now anyway. Finally get to start figuring out the tune on Jawbreaker. But first, we need to install some parts. Let's get to the bench and figure out what this all is. All right, I did, I did not get any directions, but this all seems pretty self-explanatory. Got a couple wire looms, a sensor, and a gauge. All right, you've got oxygen sensor with a fat plug on it. We've got the main loom that has a big plug on one end and a small on the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you now, probably the best way to do this is start from the back of the car and fish this all the way forward. We have a power supply loom. Two plugs in the back, one smaller for the power, one bigger for the, the sensor loom. That's it. So let's get under the car and start installing this. All right, here, the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pull out this plug. So we can put our sensor in line. There we go, that's out. Take our oxygen sensor and thread it right into the hole. It's got a little copper crush washer on it. Take a wrench and you just need to snug it up. You don't need it tight. Snug it. That's it. Now we've got our plug sitting here. We need to go ahead and route this wire up and around. And we'll go ahead and figure out how to do that. Let's go ahead and get under the car and see what we have to work with. All right, here's what I did that made the most sense to me. It runs up right there and tucks in behind the apron. Let's go under the car, bear with me. Oh, up in there kind of see it tucks in in between this double sandwich layer of metal right there comes over my connectors right there it's zip tied runs along the channel yep I know poor viewing oh boy I really need a lift and there it is that's where your heater tube would connect. That goes underneath my back seat. How easy is it to get the wire in the car? From there, we just gotta fish it up, hook it up. Well, sometimes things just don't work out the way you want it to. That's where I ended up mounting it. I hate how you can actually see the wire run. But unfortunately, the wire was about two feet too short to put it where I really wanted. So at least it's right there by the tack and sitting here driving I can easily see it. It's not ideal, not where I wanted it, but I'll make it work. Now that we have the wideband meter installed to monitor the air fuel ratio in the car we can go ahead and finally start understanding exactly what we're going to be reading on this gauge. So let me show you a little something I put together over here. All right, so here's a basic little schematic, if you will. Running our AFR tuner. This is an idea of what your gauge is going to look like. 10 value being too rich, 20 plus being way too lean. And our carbureted situation most everything we want to do is going to be between 12 and 17 15 being about mid to the 10 20 range if you're dropping down towards 10 you're running way too rich if you're going up towards 20 you're way too lean kind of gives you a really good idea of what's going on so we're going to drop a little further down and here is a basic idea of values that you're going to need to see from your air fuel meter to be not 100% optimal, but really close. 
And again, you're going to have things like ambient air temperature and things like that that are going to play a role in that as well. So your idle, and of course all of these values are going to depend that your engine is fully warmed up and not cold. Remember, IDF carburetors do not have chokes, so when the engine's cold, it runs leaner. So this needs to be at operating temperature. Your idle circuit, at full idle, you need to be at 13.5 to 14.5 is where you wanna be when you're idling and warmed up. Your idle cruise is gonna depend on two things. First, it's going to depend on what distributor you have. Centrifugal, advance only, like a 009 or like the Magnix Spark that I'm running, you should be at a 13.1 to 13.5. Now, if you're running a vacuum advanced distributor, that's where you can really benefit, and you'll be able to get 15.5, through 16.5 is where you want to be when you're idle cruising which was only basically when you're operating on the three progression ports and we'll go into that here in a little bit your wide open throttle that's when you have it floored and you're really running through the rpms your wide open throttle will be about 12.5 to 13.0 so that kind of gives you an idea of where you need to be reading your air fuel meter. Now, with the jets, come down just a little bit, your jets are what determines your idle cruise, wide open throttle, and your idle jets are gonna run pretty much from about just off idle through 1500 to 2000 RPMs. Your airs, are going to kick in between two and three thousand rpm your mains are three thousand rpm up your mixture screws only affect your idle only that is it mixture screws idle only just off idle to 1500 to 2000 that's where your idle jets shine your air jets help correct things between two and three thousand rpms your mains kick in 3,000 RPMs and up. Again, this is for the IDF carburetor, the carburetors that I'm running. So with that being said, all of this is also going to depend on whether or not your carburetors are synced, tuned properly, whether or not your floats are set properly. All of that stuff is going to really determine your outcome. So again, your engine must be up to full operating temperature. You need to have your carburetors synced properly and set up properly. Depending on what distributor you have, whether it be centrifugal only or vacuum advanced is going to depend on what kind of air fuel ratio you're going to be running under a light cruise, which is about 1500 to 2000 RPMs. Put it in like third gear and just kind of putt around and you'll start to see those numbers. Idle, sitting there idling, is only affected by the mixture screws. So there's lots of little things. There's still things I'm learning. So down below in the description, I will have a couple different links for you. One of those being a great article from John at Aircooled Net going through all of this. He actually recommends reading this two or three times over a period of time to help grasp everything a little better. The other link I'll drop below is a video I did on an overview on how to sync your carburetors. That again is really going to determine how things are running. I've been playing around with the jetting a little bit on Jawbreaker in this 2054 Stroker engine and I can tell you right now the best thing to do is invest. Invest in some jets. How do you know where to start? It's real simple. There's a couple formulas out there that tells you, you know, basically depending on the size carburetor you have, 
multiply this by this and that gives you an idle. Multiply this by this and it gives you a uh, main jets. And of course, I, air jets, I went a little small on those because I figured for right now, rich is a little better than lean. However, everybody says that. I'd rather run lit rich than lean. You're right. A lean engine will burn up your engine. However, an overly rich engine is going to burn up your engine as well. Did you know that? If not, now you do. All things we're all learning together, guys. How I've come across jetting this engine is I did the same process. I took this, multiplied this, got my baseline basically for this engine. I'll drop that link down below in the description also. That way you guys have access to that. From there, I have not drilled jets because I needed to go smaller. So what I did, went online, bought some jets, and I've been slowly dropping jets and watching the air fuel meter to kind of get an idea. So we're going to jump in the car real quick. I have a little bit of footage to show you kind of how things are. I'll put a little caption down at the bottom so you guys understand where we're at. And then we'll go from there. See you in a minute. the 2054 in Jawbreaker. We're running the Weber 44 IDFs. Let's go ahead and show you where all of your jets are located. If you take the top off your air cleaner and you look down in there, right there in between the two velocity stacks, you'll see two brass inserts. Those two brass pieces are actually your jet holders that contain main jets, your air jets, and your emulsion tubes. All you gotta do is pull that jet stack out and you'll be able to change those. All right, let's go ahead and pull the jet stacks. So go ahead and swap out some mains here. So again, the ones I showed you, just unscrew them. That's it. Now with these velocity stacks are a little bit in the way, but it's all right. There we go. Jet stack is up. You've got your main jet at the end, your Molson tube here in the center, and then on the very end, you've got your air jet. So that's pretty much what it looks like. Your Molson tube here in the center, main jet at one end, air jet at the other. All we're gonna do is slide this out Maybe. Man, sometimes they're in there. There we go. So all we do, slide it out. And that's it. Your idle jet is out of the jet stack. We're leaving the air the same. So we just swap these out. All right, now as for your idle jets, your idle jets are actually located down here on the side of the carburetor below the fuel inlet, which is down below right there. It's a lot of fun to try to get to it unless you have installed some windows. 
So I just made a little cover that goes on and a single wing nut holds it in place and keeps all the dirt and everything out. So again, trying to hold you still right here is an idle jet. Right here is an idle jet. Just a matter of taking your scrotum driver and backing it on out. Alright. You guys are really in the way. I'm noticing a theme with that lately. Alright, so there we go. There we go. We've got the holder and the idle jet. Let's go to the bench and I'll show you how to work with your idle jets. Now that we have all four main jets changed out, I went ahead and changed out the idle jets as well as you saw. What I forgot to show you is if you just take the holder, the part that screws in in the idle jet, just comes apart. It's very similar to your main jet stack, same principle. So now that all that's changed, um, I left my air jets alone, emulsion tubes, I'm not going to change it all. I'm running the same emulsion tubes from the beginning, it's standard dual carburetor emulsion tubes. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the car, let it warm up. And then once it's warmed up, we need to go ahead and go through the lean best idle process with your mixture screws. What that's going to do is set the baseline properly for the idle, and we'll go ahead and get that dialed in. That's pretty much the gist of everything when it comes to your air fuel meter, your wideband, how to uh, change out jets on your Weber IDF. And like I said, the biggest thing I can tell you is invest. Each one of these bags is a set of jets. That's four idle jets, four idle jets, main jets, air jets, all kinds of jets. Unfortunately, that's just part of it. You've got to have the jets in order to properly do it. You could start with a smaller jet and slowly drill it out, but then if you go too much, you're kind of screwed. Not to mention, are you sure that you got it to the proper size to begin with with the drill bit? Things to think about. Different strokes for different folks, guys, so do what works best for you. This is what works best for me. Unfortunately, I got a bunch of jets. Luckily, I got some from a, quite a few good friends, so I'm not out a ton of money. I am out a little bit, though. That being said, we've gone through quite a bit today. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with too much information. So on the next video, we'll go for a ride and jawbreaker, and we'll go ahead and see where we're at, and then go ahead and make some more jet corrections and see where we're at again. So until then, be kind to one another. Treat people the way you want to be treated and be good.